the Ricky Smiley Morning Show, the most funny in the morning. morning. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Just another day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Ladies and gentlemen, the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church, Dallas, Texas, Pastor Frederick Douglas Haynes. Pastor Haynes, good morning. Hey, good morning, Ricky Smiley and the Ricky Smiley Morning Show family. Thank you so much for for starting our day off the best and blessed way. Listen, today, of course, we're doing J.J. Hairston reminder. I really tap into this. Why? Because Hairston is simply saying, God, send a reminder of who you are right now. I'm having a tough time. Life is breaking me down. It seems like I can't pull it together because things keep falling apart. God, my heart is heavy and and grief stricken by, by sorrow. I need you to send me a reminder reminder of who you are and what you've done. Listen, what what, what Hairston is saying is that God is so good that sometimes we need to have flashbacks of what God has done. Ah, not just flashbacks, but highlights. I think I'll go there, Ricky Smiley, because listen, as you know, I'm a sports fan, and so after the game has been played, I love to check out the highlights. The highlights ain't the whole game, but the highlights Watch this flashback to some superb moments in the game where something extraordinary went down that was game-changing. A highlight focuses on something that was extraordinary. It was powerful. It was eye-opening, game-changing, moving. It's a highlight, and it dawned on me if they have highlights in sports, you have highlights in your life. Have you ever had a highlight, a flash? back to what God did that you know only God could have done it? Do you have any highlights to but God moments? Life was going one way, but God came through, and before you know it, your situation was transformed. I don't know about y'all, but I thank God for highlights, highlights that remind me if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be? Highlights that remind me that God is able. Listen, I don't want y'all to throw in the towel, give up, get down and stay down. No, I want you to look up and stay up and then step up with the highlights of what God has done. Here, let's do it today and ask God for a reminder because if I'm reminded of what God has done, I can look forward to what God will do. God send us a reminder. There it is, Pastor Haynes, man, the senior pastor of Friendship West Missionary Baptist Church. Let's get into this music. Love you, Pastor Haynes. Yes, sir. Love you, Ricky. Have a great one. Yes, sir. You too. Let's go. News headlines. Entertainment. Sports. It's the front page on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, Ricky Smiley Morning Show, 8, 13 out 3 hour. Y'all front page right here. Good morning. Good morning, Ricky. It's brought to you by the Capital One Quicksilver card. Earn 1.5% cash back on every purchase. Capital One, what's in your wallet? Term supply. See CapitalOne.com for details. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. A judge in Cook County, Illinois, on Wednesday ruled that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, also known as the Insurrection Clause, bars former President Donald Trump from the 2024 Republican primary ballot. The order overrules a January determination from the Illinois State Board of Elections that Trump could remain eligible. Meanwhile, a New York appellate court on Wednesday denied Trump's attempt to freeze the judgment in his civil fraud case, which means he is still on the hook to pay $454 million in the coming weeks. So that means he's probably going to have to sell off some of his real estate. In other news, Idaho on Wednesday delayed the execution of serial killer Thomas Eugene Creech, one of the longest-serving death row inmates in the U.S. This after failed attempts at lethal injection. I read online they tried eight times, Ricky. Creech, uh, who is 73, tried to inject him uh, eight times, and he did not take the needle. Uh, He was in prison in 1974 and had been convicted of five murders in three Mm. states and suspected of several more. 
They should have been able to just hit him in the head with a rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because that needle wasn't working. Uh, lastly, Rock T, you're a fan of Wendy's. They're pushing back on reports that the chain will increase menu prices. What they're doing is investing $20 million into high-tech digital menu boards that would have the capability to update prices in real time. So I guess it means they can go up or go down. Kind of like them gas oh, stations. Yeah. Yeah, right, exactly. Yeah, you know, we can see the we can see the menu just fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Maria Moore, and that's a quick look at news for more headlines and updates. Visit rickysmileymorningshow.com. Rock T, what you got in sports? Well, the L.A. Lakers shows the world why you cannot count them out yet. LeBron led a 21-point comeback to beat their rivals, the L.A. Clippers, yesterday. LeBron had 34 points. It was actually kind of cool to watch. This is like two days in a row that NBA basketball games felt like doggone the final. Finals. Like, they starting to play a little bit better defense as they get down the stretch. Uh, got a Cam Newton update for everybody regarding the brawl at that 7-on-7 youth football tournament last weekend. None of the people who participated will pursue criminal charges against one another. So I guess they all made up and said, hey, man, my bad. It's all good. And they're going to bury the hatching and keep it moving. Uh, real quick, Caitlin Clark passes legend Lynette Woodard for most college points scored in uh, basketball with 3,650 points as she continues to break records in women's hoops. It's the quick sports report right there. Brat got the hot spot right now. The Ricky Smiley Morning Show celebrates Black History Month with history makers of today. Amanda Gorman is the youngest inaugural poet in American history. She has written two books. One is a children's book called Change Sings. The other is a book of her poetry called The Hill We Climb. Both books are now available. In 2017, she was named the first ever National Youth Poet Laureate. She wants to be the president one day. In 2017, Gorman told the New York Times that she wants to run for president in 2036. Amanda Gorman a Black History Month maker of today. For more information, go to rickysmileymorningshow.com. Drop it like it's hot. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and Mr. B-R-A-T. All right, Jerry Grand Morning Show. Time for the hot spot. Brett, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tat Tat, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Lifetime's controversial Where is Wendy Williams docuseries, which aired over February 24th and 25th, averaged 1.4 million same-day viewers. That's more than triple the average primetime audience for Lifetime. That's more than triple the average primetime audience for Lifetime in the previous three weeks weeks, which hovered a little above 300,000 viewers. Whereas Wendy also brought in more same-day viewers than Lifetime's January docuseries The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, which averaged 887,000 viewers over its six hours. Moving on, y'all. Terry Crews revealed this week he didn't receive a dime for his role in Training Day, but emphasized that the lack of a check has never affected his love for a project. Crews said, I have never ever looked at what whatever money I got as a horror story. You can't nod yes and mean no. Cruz went on to say that he was only paid $4,000 for his role in 2002's Friday After Next and that he received nothing for 2001's Training Day. Wow. The two mm. films eventually put Cruz on the path to becoming the movie star he is today. He explained, I didn't get zero for Training Day, but it changed my life forever. You wouldn't know who I was if it weren't for a no-paying job. Cruz went on to compare his perspective to that of an athlete. Name somebody who played football for money when they started, he said. When they start, they get no money. They play football for free. They play basketball for free. Then you get all all the way to the pros, and then you get the millions. Uh, There's no other way, he said. There's no way to hop, skip, and jump this thing. If I did it, I loved it. This keeps my heart always full of gratitude. All right. Gotta be built from the ground up. (laughs) Buildings are built from the ground up. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, y'all, moving on, rapper Tory Lanez has filed an appeal after being found guilty of shooting Meg Thee Stallion. Lord, Lanez's legal team cited erroneous admission of evidence and prosecutorial misconduct as grounds for the appeal. Uh, the filing claimed that Megan allowed to inappropriately answer questions in a narrative format <laughs> during the December 2022 trial, including testimony concerning irrelevant and inadmissible matters, such as her feelings regarding the circumstances of the incident. Lane's attorney argued that sympathy for the victim is out of place during an objective determination of guilt. They claimed that during closing arguments, prosecutors made multiple improper appeals 
appeals to emotion and sympathy for the victim. Wow. Which had no bearing on Lane's guilt or innocence. A jury found Lane's guilty in December of 2022 on three counts related to the July 2020 shooting. That's assault with a semi-automatic handgun, having a loaded and unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and gross negligence in discharging his firearm. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison in August 2023. All right, y'all, we're going to wrap up the hot spot on that note. But coming up next, one, well, not next, why don't y'all hit us up with them? I do that all the time. Why don't y'all hit us up with them wake-up calls at 866-9-RICKY. That's 866-9-R-I-C-K-E-Y. It's the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. You liar! I believe him, yo. I don't know why, but I do. All right, y'all, Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Hey, 47 minutes after the hour. Listen, it is time for, what the hell is this? Can't think straight. Come on, man, it is our news, you can't. What? No damn wonder. Come on. <laughs> you don't need it. Yeah, you mentioned you yeah, you've mentally checked out on that when you <laughs> you want to realize it was already time to do that again. Yeah, news you absolutely positively cannot use, man. It's coming up right now. Y'all ready for it? Man, no. Why you look so excited? <laughs> Let's get it really out. So excited. It's throwback Thursday, man, to my fifty plus crew. I'm so glad to be in that fifty plus crew, man, because I look back. The under 50 folks don't know nothing about how we grew up and the things that we remember. Maria, y'all young folks just don't know. Gary, they don't know. They don't know. Man, y'all don't know what we grew up doing. Look, let's go to it. Give me some uh, appropriate throwback, uh, uh, back-in-the-day type music because y'all don't remember nothing about none of this. Uh, Y'all don't know nothing about playing outside in the heat. Getting thirsty and passing that water hose from one person to the next. Yes, sir. Ain't nobody know what who had. Ain't, you, you were sick. You had a cold. It don't matter. We were passing that water hose from one person to the next, drinking that water. Wasn't no damn that, bottle that was, water. Nobody had no damn before, Fiji. Day, be, day before yesterday, outside in the garage. <laughs> Come on now, <laughs> that boy. That water hose pipe water is good. I don't care what nobody say. Uh, y'all don't know nothing about being in the fifth grade. Remember being in fourth, fifth grade, passing the note all the way three rows over to that girl that you like? And that note said, <laughs> yeah. will you go with me? You shake oh, yes yeah. or no. And the anticipation of waiting on that note to come back across that room. Boy, let me tell you something. Y'all remember picking up your Easter suit? Remember getting your Easter suit, Gary? Yeah, I sure do. You I get it off a layaway? Mm-hmm. Get that thing off a yes. layaway? Yes. And your I mama, still look for layaway. Boy, your mama couldn't pick it up till that Friday or maybe even Saturday before Easter. Yes, sir. You put that thing on. Look, and then what we do, we wear that bad boy to school on Monday. So I everybody can see God. how sharp your ass was. With some sneakers. Oh, With some sneakers. Boy, you wear the Easter suit on Monday. Everybody was dead sharp on Monday. All right, y'all remember going outside on Sunday morning to bring that Sunday newspaper in? Yeah, that Sunday paper was about brick. three it was feet so thick. thick. <laughs> Boy. And you pull out the comic section before you give it to your mama, your grandma. I'm telling you yes, now. Sir. Mm-hmm. Yes, you remember sir. somebody? You, boy, you remember your mama, your grandma telling you to go get the white pages or the yellow pages because she had to find the phone number. Yeah, and All then right, she'll hey. mark it. Man, she'll flip that corner of the page back so she can find it again. And then take that one about the jobs back there to your uncle that don't work nowhere. <laughs> but but okay. for some reason, he's been living with your grandmama his whole life. Yeah. Remember somebody grown making you come in from a whole nother room to change the channel on the TV? Yeah. <laughs> from outside. They hit all yeah. you down the street. Yeah. Come change that, that channel. Was, that, was, that was granddad. Granddaddy used to do stuff like that. Boy, you had to change that damn channel and then go back outside. Remember getting from home from school? And watching Leave It to Beaver or Gilligan's Island. Maria, yeah. you don't know nothing oh, about oh, that. No. Yes, you don't know nothing know about, about watching about Leave It to Beaver. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Right back in your hair. Uh, that, that's that's yeah. facts. Yeah. That, that, on, is, that is the come official on, man. Uh, come get home from school. is Gilligan's Island. Fact. Gilligan's yeah. Island. Before you did, and your mama screaming, did you do your homework yet? And you can't wait. To, you got to wait till you finish watching Gilligan's Island. Cause you don't know if this is the episode that they're going to get off or not. <laughs> right. Speaking of TV, what about sitting in front of the TV on Saturday morning, man, and eating a bowl of cereal in between your legs watching Fat Albert or Scooby-Doo? Oh. Come on. Oh, Come, on yes. Come, on yeah. Come on now. Come on now. Being yeah. at the yeah. high school. Now, Fat Albert, Fat Albert came on right before Soul Train. Did you know he that? He sure man? did. Yes, oh, what's the American Bandstand, Ricky? No, yeah. it was it, yeah, it was, one well, of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, remember being at the high school after a football or a basketball game and waiting in line at the payphone? With a dime or a quarter in your pocket to call your mama to come pick you up. Yep. Come on now. <laughs> we had to walk home. <laughs> it was a line in that payphone. Oh. All right, remember going to Blockbuster Video? Remember going to Blockbuster, Blockbuster. Video? Blockbuster, yes, sir. Rock, on a Friday evening, you had to wait on somebody to bring back Toy Story or Little Mermaid because you promised your kids they could watch it. Man, Come Blockbuster was like a club back then. Man, oh, what? Man. <laughs> waiting, waiting on that person to bring that movie back that you was trying to check out. 
Uh, Rock, Rick, I know y'all remember, but this uh, putting that shoestring around your neck with the door key on it. Yes, sir. You and them, threat, yes, them, sir. Threats from your, them threats from your parents. If you lose this damn key and somebody yeah. find it and come break in our house and take all our stuff. Wait, wait, wait a minute. First of all, <laughs> a random key on the street somewhere, they're going to know it belongs to our house. And we ain't got nothing right. anyway. What they stealing? Right. All this old ass furniture. <laughs> <laughs> On this day in black history, 1942, the small town of Salem, Tennessee, it was a benevolent white family that owned a small grocery store in the predominantly black part of town. The owner was Gilman Whiteford, and he had a soft spot in his heart for the black families and especially the young black women that would come there that had children but did not for some reason have a husband. He would allow them to come into the store, and even though they didn't have money to pay for the food on that day, he would pass out a small piece of cardboard that they would check off what they owed so that when they got the money, they could come back and show them the card and pay for their items later. <laughs> Thus, this is the first known incarnation of what later became known as the EBT program. <laughs> this day in black history. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the teeth. It's Gary, baby. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Thursday, a beautiful day in the neighborhood, and here's what's happening in celebrity news, y'all. Everybody's still talking about actress Lauren Kenyana Kiki Palmer, y'all. That's a whole government name. They're saying baby Kiki is still, honey, navigating the end of her disastrous relationship with her son's father, Mr. Darius Jackson, y'all, which we all know that um, it was definitely a publicly berating thing on Miss Kiki Palmer and social media, what have you. But now it's being reported, y'all. It looks like Kiki, y'all, has has left all that behind and moved on with a new man. Now they're saying a recent encounter accidentally revealed y'all that Kiki Palmer may be secretly dating y'all Duke Riley, y'all. Is he with Miami on Rock T or is he with um the, um, um, the Los Angeles, one of them, the Los Angeles Chargers? But anyway, he's a cornerback and he's a football player. And people saying that they would make a great couple and he's the you know skin tone that Kiki likes. And people saying that, you know, she should be moving on. But I think, isn't that kind of quick? Why? What you mean? You don't be moving. I mean, women don't usually move on that quick and be public about it. It's usually be men that do crazy stuff like that, not a woman, honey. See, what we do is we use we use other women to help us get over the woman that we're trying to get over. And then we then we end up liking her and falling in love with her. So we don't we don't wait in here. Huh? We just go to the next person. Oh. Th- that's just what y'all do. He probably. I mean, she probably met Duke while she was still dating the other guy, and now he just became official. Well, but they but still said the other dude, dude was stalking. She got a cornerback. You know, he can cover. <laughs> oh, Lord. <laughs> he going to let Duke, her go nowhere. Well, Duke is a linebacker, so he going to definitely protect Ooh. him. That's, that's, that's oh, the yeah. problem right there. Uh, he got a lot of oh, core yeah. strength. Yes, sir. Yeah, the linebackers, <laughs> they, 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 they're a real, real problem. Yes, sir. Lord. Well, the she running, crazy. Backs, running backs don't care about you, but the linebackers, boy, they're going to be there. You better not. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't date him about. He got three children, honey. He ain't never but about 29, 30 years old. That's too many children. And she don't have number one. I don't think I'd be dating him. And he don't make that much money. He just got like. Maybe they can take him out of Disney World, also. Yeah, they said, well, she's going to have to take him in, honey. But congratulations to Kiki if this is the deal with her. She got her new man. As long as she's happy. Yeah. That's really all that matters, right, Gary? Yeah, she was happy with Darius. Yep. Was. Uh-huh. Past uh-huh. tense. Now she found somebody new to be happy with. You ain't going to ever be happy. Moving on. And other you would sl- know, right? <laughs> That's right, honey. And other stuff in the news, y'all, Gloria Govan, baby, she is denying y'all secretly using Matt Barnes' credit card. Now, they're saying, y'all, it was reported that retired NBA player Matt Barnes was accusing his beautiful ex-former um, basketball-wise Miami cast member Gloria Govan of using his credit cards without permission, y'all, just to book some lavish trips, y'all, to the tune of tens of thousands of dollars. Now, they're saying, Gloria said, hey, she ain't did all that. Now, according to Radar, according to the court documents y'all obtained by Radar, Govan, honey, she denied the bombshell claims Barnes brought on in his recent filing. Now, the ex-NBA star accused Ms. Govan of using his credit cards without authorization, which I want to know, how did she get them? Because well, they've was, been divorced for like 10 thank years you. or something, How right? did she get them? Hell, he lying. He told the court y'all that each time she booked travel for herself. Uh, she probably uh, uh, had a copy of them. She probably had a copy of those credit card numbers and stuff and booked them flights. Yeah, you can store all that stuff in these smartphones nowadays. Yeah, that, man, what, uh, that man ain't just rolling out of bed now and uh, uh, 
and, and just claimed her. You know, but but Ricky, killing. she got a man. She got his damn best friend. So why would she need him? Right. He, she's is she married coach, to Derek Fisher? Um, she's married I, to him. I think or are they so. dating? I don't know. He coaching high yeah. school. Uh, he coaching high school basketball. I don't know if it's <laughs> Tyler Lotto's trips. <laughs> I'm just joking. Mm, it's, a, nah. it's a high level high school basketball. That's her husband too. Um, um, he Derek is her, is her husband, you know. So, but I, I don't think Glory would do that. He's just probably feeling better right now. He's going through. Didn't he just lose a job or something for fighting or what have you? I think he was fighting. Um, on, uh, with, I don't yeah, think so he, he lost a job, but he's you know, he he took a, he taking a break from from coaching a little bit. He lost with the oh, yeah the Sacramento Kings they say. But anyway, child. But nevertheless, honey. So don't be blaming Glory, honey, because your money is low. This woman got a His good money. Money ain't low. He got he got money now, but she probably got uh, his credit card and 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 that stuff is being uh, tracked back to his card, and so she need to put that money back in his account. Yeah. Well, he said that she only charged twenty two thousand six hundred thirty five dollars on his Amex. We need all of it. We need all of it. <laughs> Only I mean, twenty two. We going to Judge Mathis. <laughs> okay, yeah, I definitely got to go to Judge Mathis. But anyway, let's continue to pray for Glory because I don't, I don't think she would have done something like that I'd, after all this time. That's not just like bringing back your old, the, her new man. That's just bringing things back up to him. Because mm-hmm. you remember how you know he got her and how they were all friends at one time. So I just think something going on well, right now. Well, you said Derek Fisher got money. Just tell Derek Fisher to put the twenty two thousand back into his account. I wish he would. Hell, I wouldn't put nothing back because I think he's being delusional right now. He ain't he going on the trip too. She ain't just booking the flight for herself. Yeah, well, I mean, she got to take her man where she go, and he probably said, "Oh, her back child support." So she did do it. So pay the money that you owe. I'm gonna get it through your credit card if you don't pay it to me directly. So she doing what she needs to do, honey. Just in time for Black History Month. All right, the color today, honey, is one of my favorite colors. My color today is ash. On the high end, you say ash, and on the low end, you say beautiful gray. That's your color for today. All right, y'all. Y'all give it up for Gary with the team. All right, y'all. Ricky Smiley Morning Show. I'm going to have to wake up call. Get at me. 8669. Ricky, here we go. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. It's time to get yourself together. Because he woke you up this morning. Wake up. 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 Wake up Named Dre from Tampa, he reached out because he's been married three years and hasn't spoken to his wife <clears throat> in three days over something her brother did. Here's what happened. Hey, yo, what's going on? This is Dre from Tampa. First off, I just want y'all to know that I really love the show. But today, I got a question for y'all. So me and my wife, we've been married for three years, and now all of a sudden we didn't fell out over this money issue dealing with her little brother. So I got to go out of town, and my wife's car is in the shop. So I go ahead, pick up a rental car, boom. She's straight while I'm gone. Her brother who's staying with us, he done took the rental car. This fool done got in an accident in the rental car going to pick up his kid. But look, long story short, I'm going back and forth with the rental car company. They just tell me I need to pay this $1,000 deductible and everything be settled. So boom, I go ahead and
that ain't your that ain't his regular so you you take right. an extra risk and if you ain't got if you can't afford to pay it back okay let's talk about what kind of payment arrangement can you can you, can you drop me a couple hundred every couple weeks or something you don't just say i'm on hard you time know you know but, that's bull crap when it comes to black folks. Exactly. They show a dog on this, but you know that's so easy to say it done. But, but I mean, from the start, you know the boy don't have the money, and his sister gonna take up for him. Doesn't he live? Doesn't the brother okay, live? Okay, but why the wife? But if, if that's, that's my that's, wife, I got an issue with you letting him take the car. Then you need to give me the but money. But that's right, her brother, and you know how family is, and like you just said, but Rick, you're that's right, black you're family. right. But yeah, but once you get married, that's your new family, and yeah. the wife mm-hmm. should be siding yeah. with the husband and supporting the husband and telling her brother, you need to find a way to get this money back. But, I know you on hard times or whatever, uh, but go deliver some food, go wash yeah. some cars, or do something. But you need to pay but my man back. she did that, then her family not going to talk to her no more. So she got to sign yeah, with her brother. Well, go live with them. Be go right. live with them. <laughs> well, <laughs> and, right. and, and, go, go, yeah, and go wreck their cars. Yeah, Don't well, give, give a damn about none of that stuff. And we I think the husband has been very reasonable. The fact that he went ahead Absolutely. and paid the thousand dollars out yeah, of his it was pocket. In his name. He had yeah, no I mean, but I, I, yeah. As a wife, I think that you should be <laughs> supporting yeah. your husband and yeah. telling your brother. But, but, but the thing about it, we already helping you by letting you stay here. You cannot become. If I let you come and stay here, then you need to start being part of solutions and not adding problems. It's a problem with you staying here because this house is not set up for you to stay here. So if we let you yeah. stay here, you cannot make it think you cannot make any single thing worse for us. And I'm talking about dishes in the sink. I, I, I'll never forget this. I was staying uh, with my uncle uh, Anthony Bruce Smiley and, and, uh, um, and my aunt Candace before my apartment came through when I was like 20. And uh, I didn't have a job at the time, but they got up and went to work every day. When they came home, their bed, their bed was made up. The va- the carpet was vacuum, and I had dinner on the stove, cooking little stuff and or uh, whatever. And then when I figured out they was on their way home, I would leave and go somewhere for a few hours to give them some time and some space, and then ease back in there seven 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 o'clock seven thirty, and go in that room and lay down and go to bed to show them that I that I'm an asset to that uh, two bedroom apartment. I'm an asset and not um, a liability. Uh, a liability. You know, so he's saying that he just been a liability. Uh, so, so that's 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 what I think, Gary. What, Gary, why you you disagree with that? Because Ricky, you gotta understand too. Now, what you just said, that's great because that's how it was back then. Because that's the way you was raised. This is a whole total different generation. Number one. But my thing is this: you gotta understand, husbands are not forever. Family is. So my thing is, she got to go no, in her not. family. Who said yeah. that? Who went family well, forever. Well, no, family, gonna, well, most of them, so she, she needs to go with her family because just as tonight, if the husband acting a fool behind this little bit right now, that means he ain't going to be around. He's the one got to go in his pocket. Yeah, but I mean, if but the, still, How about if the brother, let's change that. How about the brother acting a fool by taking the car? Where's the, the brother, fool in that? He had to go somewhere, evidently, and the sister, well, okay, his sister let him need to, He the need car. to get Uber or a taxi cab or call the husband and ask the husband permission to use the car. But Why did he do be, that? It was her car. It was a rental car that no, the no, no. But rented it. The husband rented the car. Well, yeah, but he probably rented it for the wife, and she just said, "Go ahead and take it because no, their car man. was broke." No, man. So, but I think family should be over everything, and the rest of that <laughs> no, stuff just falls no. in place. Family be the first family be one that'll mess you up and have you in debt and screw you over quicker than a friend would. Trust me on that one. And well. everybody know that everybody got those same issues or whatever mm-hmm. blood thicker than water. That's a big one of the biggest lies ever been told. Them the ones that'll have you messed up around here, have you in debt, have you get you put out of your house, fooling around with a family member that's irresponsible. Hell no, you out your mind, Gary. Well, I, I, well, I'm going with my family, honey, because I don't trust all these other people, no, um, no spouse now, what that if it just was been around for three brother? years. What if, your, what if your outside brother that your dad... Uh, <laughs> go to commercial. He must be out of your <laughs> rabbit. <right now. laughs> he said go to commercial. Go to commercial. <laughs> yes, sir, Black Tony, what up? Shady, what's up? What's up, man? I'm not. Hey, Rick, I'm letting you yep. know right now. I, I'm. I not am. Make not, it. I know. I am not coming up the other day because I'm being harassed right now, and I'm. I'm. I, I, I'm trying to deal with this right now. But one of your one of your uh, workers is har- harassing me, and I'm not. I'm not trying to come up there and get abused, and, and, it, and if somebody try to fight me or something, because then if somebody try to fight me, I'm. I'm what you mean? Um. Uh, what's uh gear? Women, Gary, I'm harassing not, you. Yeah, I'm not fooling with no, you. I'm not harassing you. You just need to pay me my you damn money. You ain't harassing me, Shotty. You, you, you gonna take me and call my phone all, all last night. Tell me about some damn money. Man, I ain't, man. 
I told you I'm, I'm, oh, I told I'm you money. You got a reason to call. I'm uh, what uh -huh. happened, Gary? First of all, you remember I loaned his ass money, damn it, a couple of years ago. My thing is this, it's income tax time. I need to write him off on my damn taxes if he's not gonna pay me my money. That's what that needs to be. <laughs> Boy, you sound like y'all sound like Miss Nella and Charles. <laughs> I, I, told, I, told, I told you, sir, I, I pay you a little bit, a little bit at a time. I, I'm not, I, I don't have the whole thing right I now. I didn't give you a little bit at a time, so you don't pay me back no hey, damn little Gary, bit. Gary, I agree with you. Don't you hate that? They, yeah, yes, you I hate them along, but they want to give you back a little bit yes. at a time. Hell, no, I sir. I pay you every, every time. I, every time I get paid, I give you like twenty dollars or fifteen dollars, something like that, <laughs> until I pay it out. Gary, how much you gave him? I gave his ass five hundred dollars. Well, I loaned him five hundred dollars. How much he gave you back? He gave me back what seventy damn five. <laughs> Tony, come on, mate. And, I, and that uh, was two uh, years ago. Yes. What what you getting? Two or three dollars or something here and there? No, I gave I gave I gave him twenty twenty dollar one time. I gave him like thirty thirty dollars another time. Then I gave him let me see twenty five twenty plus thirty. That's fifty fifty five. No, then I gave dollars. him then I gave him fifteen dollars. <laughs> So that's another sixty dollars. Then I gave him like ten dollar one day. When Do you I pay him, him Ricky? Does he get paid? Cause he don't. Damn, I'm coming to work. Do you pay him? <laughs> I think he, Black Tony, you get your check every two weeks, don't? <sighs> Rick, but this is all right. This, this is this is uh, harassment and, and uh, it's questionable behavior. Now I, I don't have to put up with this. I'm gonna go to uh, human research. And tell them that I'm being scratched okay, out. But what they got to do with you not coming to work? Thank you. Gary ain't gonna harass you at work. Cause, cause he ain't finna be, he ain't finna be all up in my face, uh, hollering at me and trying to fight me and stuff. I ain't finna do the all man that. Man is trying to file you on his taxes since uh, trying to file. You know, he just need you. Don't you. What you need him to sign something, Gary? Yes, he needs to sign. First of all, he need to sign. He signed the damn promissory note saying that he was gonna pay me back. He didn't pay back yet, but the damn seventy-five dollars. So he need to do something, or I need to be able to get. You need to let me get his information, where I can give it to the damn tax people. So you can can't you, get my information. Can you work so it you off? What, what 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 you need done done inside your house that he can work it off, Gary? Well, he can. <laughs> um, do, I got a lot of exercise that he could be doing. Gary said you go to your house and work that, some of that work some of that tax money off. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Black Tony from the streets, son. He know how to work things Black off. Black Tony. <laughs> I, ain't, I ain't finna do all that. Not, not, see, now I'm being uh, sexual harassed. Now I'm finna no, go to L. Him, him research for real. No. I be gonna choke you out, and then I'm gonna get a hate crime. Hell no, I ain't finna do that. I see y'all. Yeah, you end up on the ID. So you're not coming, Black Tony? No, nah, I'll come when he ain't doing. Well, I guess <laughs> you won't be up in L. coming here. Say, man. Another Black History Spotlight, and this one is uh, going to be a little bit more serious because it is the last day of black history. Let's talk about George Washington Carver, inventor, scientist, botanist, developed and promoted about 100 products made from peanuts, including cosmetics, plastics, and nitroglycerin, and peanut butter. Now, in 1921, George Washington Carver testified before Congress in support of a tariff on imported peanuts. At one time, he was studying at Tuskegee and a visiting white professor was marveling at his creations. Dr. Carver was quoted as saying, yes, it is truly amazing all the things you can do with these. The professor said, these what? Dr. Carver said, these nuts. George Washington Carver. These what? These nuts. These nuts. <laughs> oh. oh, man, speaking of these nuts, Gary. Uh. Hold it. He's half man, half woman. It's Gary. I want to hip you to the T. Mm -mm. It's Gary, baby. Gary has the T and the Kalua of the day. What up, Gary? Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, America. Good morning to you. It's Thursday. A beautiful day in the neighborhood. And here's what's happening in celebrity news. Y'all remember y'all when y'all former president Donald Trump launched his limited edition golden sneakers? Y'all for only $399. Y'all were there saying that 
Fat Joe, y'all was among the first to get a pair of them. You know, he's been kind of going back and forth with the public. But they're saying, y'all, one man at the sneaker con paid only $9,000, y'all, for an autographed pair of Trump high-top sneakers. And only 1,000 pair of the golden Never Surrender high-top sneakers were available, y'all. Well, rapper Fat Joe, y'all, is definitely out there defending himself. He's defending, y'all, the newest addition to his sneaker collection. Now, in a live stream the other day, Fat Joe said, why? Why, y'all? He said, if you do collect art, do you really um know what um, um Jean Michel by Squad was into? Did you know? He said, he said you love the art, so you get it. And then we're gonna say, I had to get my hands on Trump sneakers. Period. Now he empathetically denied y'all that he's a tr a Trumper. He said, but he um would never vote for Trump. He said, now I have thousands and thousands of sneakers. He said, I gotta get my hands on them. He said, I am a sneaker collector, so I had to find these. He said, I don't know, honey, what none of um, these guys did. He said, he but I collect sneakers. Period. Ooh. Oh, honey, you said that, that would be one pair I wouldn't get. I don't care yeah. if, if 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 I if I was Mr. Footlocker. I would not yeah. carry all uh, the product of a fascist and a racist uh, in my store or in my closet. I don't care. Yeah. Period. Well, even if you're saying you're doing it for an investment, that, that don't wash because you're still supporting somebody who is yeah. trying to bring harm to people that look like you. So yeah. why would you do that? Well, he said he's a sneakerhead and he's a collector. He said you collect art. I don't tell y'all about art that y'all buying and who what they did. So don't tell me about buying my sneakers. So he's got his golden sneakers. So I guess congratulations to Fat Jody. And so that y'all need to think about that when he put out his next album. If that's the case. All right, moving on in other celebrity news, y'all. Kadeem Hardison, Jasmine Guy, y'all, Daryl Bell, and the cast of A Different World, y'all. They are heading to Atlanta, y'all, on a 10-city HBC tour starting, y'all, today, y'all. Now, they're saying that on tour. HBCU. Yep, HBCU, honey. They said the um, tour is going to um, kick off today, honey, um, um, at the prestigious Atlanta University Center, home to Clark Atlanta University, Morehouse College, and Spelman College. And they're saying other cities include Washington, D.C., y'all, um, Montgomery, Alabama, and so many other different um, cities. So congratulations to them. They said it's supposed to be a real big thing. Now, you remember a different world ran back on NBC y'all, for six seasons from September the 24th of 1987 to July the 9th of 1993, y'all, and, and it was a great show. Do you think um, uh, college students today are watching those throwback episodes? They should be. I think it they was, are. Uh, yeah, because I loved it, and I still watch it. I don't um, think so with them phones, man. They got so much other stuff to get into. TV ain't like it used to be. I'm not sure because that, that I mean, the content on the show is good, but it's kind of dated. But I, I don't see a college student sit down watching Different World. T Taylor, have you watched a Different World? I've seen it, and... Um, I don't know. I, <laughs> I think she just proved your point. I've uh, Ricky. seen it. I don't. I don't know too much about it, but I've seen it. Yeah. Really? See, I told you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that's it. Well, honey, interesting. Well, that's good. Then, well, they're going to be doing that too, y'all. So, if they're coming to a city near you, please stop by and see them. All right. My final story, y'all, Ricky. A lot of celebrities are angry, and I don't know if this is going to affect um, you know any of us or y'all, but it's being reported y'all that Kellogg's CEO Patrick. Nick. Y'all familiar with him? He's going viral, y'all, after he said his money-saving suggestions to poor families. Now, they're saying he made an appearance on CNBC Squawk the other day, and they said, um, he said, y'all, that poor families should consider eating cereal for dinner to save money. He's marketing. Hey, Kay, how you feel about it? What are your thoughts on that? Well, <laughs> I think that could, that could, I mean, if you switch it up every day, you know, Captain Crunch one day, Fruit Loose the next day, some tricks. Man, be quiet. Honey Nut Cheerios. <laughs> well, he said families, y'all, who are struggling, honey, with inflated grocery bills should eat cereal for dinner. And a lot of celebrities, some are talking about it, saying that that's a good deal, because some of them are saying that's what we did. I mean, it's and a meal. I still do. It's, it's marketing, bro. Yeah. He's supposed to say that. He's the CEO of a cereal company. He's supposed to say things that's going to get people to buy more cereal. As long as you ain't got to right. eat the same one every day. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. He said the high prices of meat and poultry is up, so honey, just eat you some cereal. You know, a lot of you know. And, we was, and, and these kids now be having five or six boxes over. You better, you better not, Maria. You is better it not to have more than one box open when we was growing up. Well, okay, thank yeah. you. We could not. Damn, that's why I opened up more now. The, open up, man. You yep. open up. It better not be. I'm talking. About, you better not think about cracking open that other you box. You should have better not, honey. Freaking Not at all. Flake out of that cornflake box. Was gone. See, that's right. You see, Rick, you, ain't nothing like combining the cereal. You take Frosted Flakes and and, and Golden Grams and, and and Captain Crunch and mix them all together. Bro. I mean, I'm cool. I'm with. I'm with. Then all you that, just said what you just said. It. You couldn't do that. Um, we Rod couldn't T. do it growing up. You sure better not. 
We had a, a my mama had a, a sweet one and a non sweet. We had um, corn flakes and we had some um, frosty flakes. And we had to eat y'all, the damn corn flakes. I don't remember waking first. up, pouring up, pouring up a whole bowl of sugar, and then you add your frosted flakes in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. To make That's why sweet. I wouldn't give my kids no cereal at night. All that sugar, they'd be wired. Mm-mm. Well, honey, we yeah. went wired then. We nothing about no damn wires. But we you couldn't afford eat. no. And then, then Cookie Crisp and Captain Crunch having them commercials, you couldn't afford it. You sitting up there with them damn frosted, them damn, not even frosted flakes. You had to get the regular corn flakes. That's that right, honey. It. That was You better it. hope that damn milk was updated. And then then uh, the milk be spoiled. Then you got to get some pet milk and some water. Water. Uh, oh, yes. Y'all, y'all don't know nothing about that. Okay, yet. honey. Trust me. I know, honey. And, you, and that was not, because it was too thin, Ricky. The, after the pet milk and the water got mixed, it just wasn't thick enough. You know, it was just kind of just watery like so. Man, but, I was so skinny mm-hmm. back then, Maria. I used to have to run around in the shower to get wet. Oh, no. <laughs> And a Kahuna Day, honey, is one of my favorite Kahuna. My Kahuna Day is ash. On the high end, you say ash, and on the low end, just say beautiful gray. That's your Kahuna for the day. pretty skinny, dog. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That's thin, That's true. boy. Ooh, but we were broke. Oh, yeah. We were broke. Yeah, Mike. Yeah. yeah, Mike. Man, we were so broke. Roaches was in our family pictures. <laughs> Broken in that dog. Were they posing or just kind of walking by? <laughs> Some of them were posing, a few of them were walking by. It was hard to get them to be still. <laughs> <laughs> they back there chilling. <laughs> I don't know why we keep you calling, son. Come on, I thought about that. Uh, so, bro, ro- with roaches being your family pictures. <laughs> They, they photo bombing you. <laughs> <laughs> they walking by like, oh, pose, homie. <laughs> we gotta hit y'all, be still. Here we go. Smile. And we the whole little Roach family. <laughs> <laughs> this is our shot. This is our the shot. Daddy Roach, the Mama Roach, and the little baby Roach. The Mama Roach be praying with a little tail on the end. <laughs> and they hold their hands. All right, y'all. Coming up in what's trending, ladies. What is a major girl code rule for you and your friends that should not be broken? And men, what is something you find important for guy code? Call us now eight six six nine Ricky. That's eight six six nine R I C K E Y. Never take pictures with roaches in the Next back. Next on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. Did you see that post? People are talking. Here's what's trending on the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, Rick Smiley Morning Show. All right, let's get, let's get into this, man. In life, there are just certain rules that men and women uh, uh, know to follow as a part of a girl and bro code, right? So it's not something that uh, we're taught or told to do. Our intuition kick in, and we know what to do in a certain situation with other people. Uh, a survey asked both men and women to share some of these code rules and uh, hear what uh, someone had to say. Yeah, so these are pretty interesting, Ricky. Let's start with women. If something is off about their appearance, pull them to the side and tell them. Now, this can include a red stain on their pants, something in their teeth, their makeup, or their hair messed up. For the fellas, if a friend buys you a drink, you don't pay it back. You just buy the next round. Uh, Both men and women, if you drop a girl off at home, you stick around until she gets inside. If you drop her off by her car... Yeah, that part too. Mm-hmm. Depends on where she lives. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you, dog. Keep them headlights on. <laughs> Men, if he's flirting with her, do not interrupt. Oh, yeah, that's a good one right there. I got one for the women. Look out for the other women when they drunk. You know what I'm saying? So if, if they leave the room, make sure no one spikes their drink. For the man, always walk on the street side of the sidewalk when with a lady. I do that all the time. Men, a lot of men, men don't even know to do that. Absolutely. You have to pretend, and don't you sit have with to, your with, back with to the, the door in the restaurant. And then when you cross in, cross in the street, whatever side the cars are coming, you get on that side to, to be the shield between her and the car. Absolutely. Always. Absolutely. I got another one for the ladies. If you see their partner cheating on them, you tell them. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yes, please. <laughs> Because we need to know. A lot of us wouldn't even know uh, if somebody didn't tell. We'll, we'll still be with them. Yep, yep. What about for the guys? If a guy is, if you, if your guy is dating a girl, a new girl, and 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 you know that other dudes that you know that smashed her, mm. should you tell the guy that hey man, she kind of that's the set out. 
Yeah, she set out. Yeah, they don't, they don't, a lot of them don't be caring. They'll start speaking to you. They're, they're going to the room with the set out and lock the door and hold it. So, baby, we're going to get through this. <laughs> yeah, I think exes, siblings, and close friends should be, you know, off limits. Or you should have a conversation about that. Mm. But you can find love with somebody else. Yeah, yeah don't do yeah. like Jermaine, and, Jermaine Jackson did uh, Randy Jackson. No, when no. He married his oh, ex, that was terrible. Mm-hmm. His yeah, they ex-wife had kids and then, the same woman. Then when he got some black hair dye, live happily, happily ever after. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> That Jermaine Jackson kid. Uh, Jermaine Jackson hair kid. Sharpie baby hair. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Crocker right. Dutch chocolate. <laughs> cake let's meat. go to the let's go to the phone. <laughs> Y'all get at me. 866 9 Ricky. 866-9-R-I-C-K-E-Y. Good morning. Hello, my name Mimi from Atlanta, Georgia. For both code, don't say a damn thing. Don't say a damn thing. Amen. I'm calling from Twinsburg, Ohio, and if you're going to cheat, don't bring him in front of us, and then we won't have anything to discuss. I'm calling from Florida. Rule that shouldn't be broken amongst friends. If you see your homeboy with his um, side piece, you don't tell. I'm calling from Atlanta, and the rule is telling deepest secrets when you fall out. That girl should not sleep with girls or call your friend's boyfriend. Yes, my name is Tracy, and I'm calling from Charlotte, North Carolina. In the rule that you shouldn't break as the girl code is a woman should never go behind her friend and be her husband or her boyfriend, no matter how long they've been separated. Hey, this is Brittany. I'm calling from Maryland, and a girl code violation for me is don't post unflattering pictures of me. If you're going to post mm. a picture of me on my birthday, at least, you know, pick a picture that looks nice of me. Don't just post one, <laughs> yes. you know, random you got yes. on. I don't like that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, uh, and then going to um, tag you in it. Like you, like you yeah. want to share it to your people? No. Mm-mm. Right. I just had a chick cheat on me with another chick. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Uh-huh. I said, bring her to the house and show me <laughs> exactly <laughs> what y'all did. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, that's, uh, that's gangster. Yeah. <laughs> let me let me approve this. Show me, show me, the show me. <laughs> Get in the bed. Show me what you did. Show me what you did. Yeah. Right. Acting all show bad. The homie can't have none. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. If y'all can get through, y'all hit us up at Rick's Round of Morning Show. All right, y'all, Rick's Round of Morning Show. Hey, 13 before the top of the hour. Maria, good morning. Good morning. You know, buying a house is really expensive. We all know this. We see it in the news. Some of us are experiencing it. Uh, And as housing affordability challenges persist, a growing trend sees young people considering buying homes with friends. Now, a survey by Fairview New Homes found 44% of 18 to 24-year-olds without a home would like to buy with a friend. According to reports, places where where high housing costs hinder ownership, uh, now folks are considering co-ownership which allows shared deposits, mortgage payments, and expenses. However, the challenges include potential stress and strain on friendships and the need for open communication about financial and legal obligations. Despite complexities, co-ownership provides a pathway to home ownership for those facing barriers like deposits and being able to afford it. Plus, what do you do when you have a difference of opinion on the interior decor? This is a, probably a question for Gary. But there's a lot of things to split down the middle if you're buying a home. But um, it could be advantageous if you don't have enough money. Uh, could you buy a home with your best friend? No. Yeah, no. Uh, no. no. It ain't no. Uh-huh. Buy, I buy one, but not live there. I mean, go in. As an investment. Uh, as an investment. But but uh, and it just I don't think it's set up for... Um, adults to roommate because it's already hard having a you know having a wife or having a husband because you got to get used to that. But uh, people got everybody not uh, raised the same. Everybody have different set of rules and home training and and ways and habits and and all that kind of stuff. You got people that got bad habits and like like uh, uh, you. I, I don't know. It, it would have to be your best friend who you grew up with. Uh, damn near. That, that's what I think. Uh, Gary, what are your thoughts? Yeah, he would have to be my best friend, and neither one of us ever planning on getting married. Because I mean, you can't. I'm not gonna buy no house, and then you. It's gonna be just like renting the house. Oh, I can't pay the rent this week because I'm I, I'm short on my check. See, now that's the that. problem. Yeah. So uh-uh. all of that. And then, well, in many cases, mortgages are cheaper than rent. And say if you get a, a place that has a basement 
or you all could live on two different sides of the house. You know, if you're in between the ages yeah. of 18 and 24 and affordability is the issue, y'all split that mortgage. Y'all yeah. decide we're going to stay here for five years. We're going to build up some equity. We're going to sell it. We're going to split it. And then we'll go off and try to buy a but house. But what if you get into a relationship saved? during that five-year period and, and that whole <laughs> you, thing changes? You got to go into it knowing that. Tell you me, know? What's gonna, you don't know what's going to happen a year from now. No, I'm just saying you got to go into it knowing that changes can happen. Yeah. If you write out a contract and say this is what we're going to do, you know, you get this half, I get this half man, you after have this many damn, years. You have to damn near have Dr. Field living there with y'all. Thank you. To work. I'm telling you. Hell, a contract you know is- it, it just be a lot of little small stuff, tedious Caddy, uh, personal stuff. It's hard to live with somebody because people got bad, like little bad habits that make you not yeah. even want to come home. And just think you know about it: you come home, you want to watch the game, and then your roommate sitting there in, 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 uh, uh, with some new company watching ESPN <laughs> and got two of his homeboys over there. They drinking mm-hmm. house smell like weed. Yeah. Then they go in there blowing up the bathroom, the toilet stopped up. Man, you don't understand. And it'll never work because you can say, well, hell, I'm paying half of the rent, too, so I get to bring who I want to bring here, and I want to do this, so uh-uh. And but most of want- the people that think like that, most of the people that smoke weed, most of the people who are irresponsible are not going to have the money and the mindset to think, let me build wealth and go ahead and buy a house. you got to get educated- with someone who's like me- like-minded. To go into educated, that. Uh, educated people with just nasty habits and just, mm-hmm. I mean, educated, do everything right, make money, but just ain't got, ain't, didn't have that grandmother home training that, that uh, no, you know, that decorum. Uh, it, it's, it's really hard, Maria. It, it just mm-hmm. depends. And if somebody want to bail I, out and get out of the mortgage and say, you know what, just take my name off this house or whatever, or let's sell it and just go our separate ways, then now you're breaking the mortgage and yeah. now that can open up a whole nother can of worms. Well, y'all are yeah. just pessimistic. No, we just we being real. <laughs> I've seen it work. I've actually seen it work for people. I wouldn't. I've do seen it. it work. I've seen it work. It might work one out of ten. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Two people uh, went to college. They they got their goals and they more goal oriented because they more they more into their career than being in the house in the first place. But man, when you get them doggone, uh, uh, oh my God, it just I, I, I don't know. Chick wake up with yeah. allergies, making that noise. <laughs> 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 what have you been doing, Kay? <laughs> Man, it is hot today. Somebody is about to sit in the hot seat. It is hot out here. On the Ricky Smiley Morning Show. All right, y'all, in the hot seat this morning is award-winning journalist, radio uh, show host, political analyst, and New York Times New York Times bestseller author. Y'all, please welcome Clay Kane. What up, Clay? Good morning. I'm doing great. It's such an honor to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, happy to have you, man. Uh, congratulations on your new book, The Gift, The Downward Spiral of Black Republicans. Uh, it's been on the bestseller list for four weeks. Can you give us a snapshot of your book and uh, why it's important for people to read? And again, thank you for coming. Oh, absolutely. Listen, I wrote this book because I've been tired of the Republican Party lying about our history. Uh, this book is a reclaiming of our history. You know, black political movements, they began in the Republican Party. So I wanted to analyze how did black Republicans go from Frederick Douglass to Clarence Thomas? How did they go from Jackie Robinson to Herschel Walker? I wanted to examine how we got there, expose frauds, honor heroes, and hopefully incentivize people to be more engaged in the political system, especially right now at this moment. So crucial. Hey, Clay, so uh, special K, I have a uh, question for you. Now, so even for what we would call traditional black Republicans, right, this whole MAGA takeover of the party seems to be a bridge too far, even for some of them. What's your opinion of the reality of this ideology that we need to understand that for those of us that want to, you know, remain on for those of them that want to remain on that side of the spectrum? Uh, Listen, I say that uh, it's a long time in the making. I mean, the GOP has created an environment whether it's a welfare queen narrative, just anti-black policies, Trump didn't happen in a vacuum. This is the hate the GOP created. And I agree with you. It's now a bridge too far. Colin Powell, of course, is no longer with us. He left the GOP. But we as black folks, we have to fully capitalize and utilize our power. So for the power players who stay in the GOP, black folks who stay in the GOP, 
it appears right now, it's not about helping black communities. It is about having shameful and materially dangerous impacts on black communities. Tiff Scott voting against the Voting Rights Act, uh, gutting the George Floyd Policing Act. Clarence Thomas. Clarence Thomas has waged a war on black communities, and it's important to expose that. So I say we have to be conscious and aware. And when you got a former, when you got a presidential candidate comparing us to mugshots and indictments, and there's right. folks who will clap in the room, that's crazy. We got to call that out. We have to expose that. Yeah, Clay, and I, I think. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. think that's the thing that's so confusing. Um, it seems like more black people are supporting the Republican Party. Um, than ever, than I've noticed in my lifetime. Do you see it as possibly an attempt to reclaim the party or them falling for deceit? And what do you think that appeal is? You know, so I I think it's two things. Um, A lot of polls are saying that black folks are going more towards to the GOP. I don't know how true that is. I mean, it's you can never trust polls and polls are historically wrong with black voters. But if there is any truth to that, I think it's due to misinformation and disinformation, to your point. That's why I think it's important for us to have this conversation here. And I'll also say respectfully, I think it's due to some celebrities in our community who uh, know if they are contrarian, it'll get them a headline on Fox News, who know that if they say something that's just factually incorrect, that um, they will be they'll be celebrated by some really conservative, hateful organizations. So I believe we're smarter than that. But with this book, I hope that if we know this history, I lay out the dangers of falling for uh, anti-black policies. I'm hoping it'll wake people up. Ida B. Wells once said, the way to right wrongs is to turn the light of truth upon them. And that's what this book is doing. Wow. Hey, I I have to ask you this. Uh, Do you think that um, the next four years Joe Biden becomes president, do you see uh, Clarence Thomas or any other United States Supreme Court justice uh, stepping down or? Yeah. No, I don't. And this is um, I mean, Clarence Thomas is going to stay till the, the, the bitter end. And, you know, you think about right now with the Supreme Court agreeing to hear this Trump immunity case. This is a conservative court, and this conservative court, affirmative action, they've waged war on that. I should add, affirmative action was created by a black Republican named Arthur Fletcher, and the GOP erases him. So our courts are really the guardrails for our democracy and and citizenship. But what I think is really funny, you see right now this attack on Fonnie Willis, right? When you got Clarence Thomas and his wife, she was texting Trump's chief of chief of staff when they were trying to overturn the election. You have his wife who has been so egregious, who has been so insidious, yet people will condone Clarence Thomas and demean uh, Fonnie Willis, who did not commit any ethics violations. But you see the hypocrisy there. But they uplift him because he is the anti-civil rights black person. They are seeking out black people to uphold white supremacy in the GOP. I laid out in the book, they are recruiting people who will play this game, even if they know it's a lie, even if they know that that it's it's it's, it's a fraud. But this is their their hope and their their passion to overturn civil rights. Okay, okay, and Clay, we don't have much time left, but there's also a strong narrative going throughout the community that Biden has given us nothing for our votes. This is a right. common this is a common theme that I'm hearing now. How, how would you address that? I would say that it's important to be engaged. If you don't like what you see in the political process, the answer is to not uh, disengage, just to engage even more. I can give you a list of incredible things that have happened. More needs to be done. With student loan reform, that's a a big win. The Pave Action Plan, combating racism and home appraisals. But I got to also say this, in the final chapter, it's a what's next chapter. I'm from West Philly. I used to be a non-voter. And I'm not proud of that, but I didn't know civics. I didn't know how the process worked. So my hope is that we have to really understand if you don't do politics, politics will do you. The other side, they vote. They wait 50 years to get what they want. They're consistent. I want us to turn out and fully utilize our power and push back against grifters and con artists. So a lot has been done. The record is there, but if you want more, you got to vote in more people who think like you and think like us and care about our communities. That's crucial. That's how they did it during Reconstruction. That's how Frederick Douglass did it. 
and, and, Har- yeah. and Harriet Tubman did it, and Ida B. Wells did it. So it's the long game. It really is a long game. Hey, hey Clay, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Uh, how can people follow you and get a copy of your new book, The Gift, The Downward Spiral of Black Republicans? How can we get that? Uh, anywhere books are sold, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, bookstores. I've heard some bookstores aren't putting it on the shelves. It's another story. <laughs> but thankfully, I'm still rocking it. I'm all over social media, C-L-A-Y-C-A-N-E. And thank you all so much. I really, really appreciate the love. No, nah, man. Thank you, man. Hey, uh, uh, and, and make sure you stop by any time. Y'all give it up and share your love right now for Clay Kane. <laughs> More than Friday morning show coming up. All right, 27 minutes after the hour, y'all got your front page right here. Maria, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, RSMS family. Here's what's happening in news. Russian President Vladimir Putin vowed to fulfill Moscow, Moscow's goals in Ukraine and sternly warned the West against deeper involvement in the fighting, saying that such a move could come with the risk of a global nuclear conflict. Putin's blunt warning came in a state of the nation address. That, yeah. He won't want that. He can try to think he won't that if he want to. He don't want that. Well, you know, they have uh, an election coming up. I mean, he's already certain to win uh, re-election. Yeah, they, but don't really re- they don't really have real elections. Yeah, they really don't have real elections over there. 99.9%. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're scared to vote against him. You end up in jail. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, he's just trying to make a statement, you know, there the, the, he, and really underline his readiness to raise the stakes. You know, it's a tug of war with the West to protect the Russian gains in Ukraine. So we'll see what happens there. Uh, in other news, breaking news coming out of Florida, police are investigating a shooting that left one person dead and others hurt in Orlando, Florida. Orlando Police Department said when officers arrived at the scene, they located multiple victims with one person dead. Police have not released any details at this time, including a possible motive for the shooting. The investigation is ongoing, and the agency will release more information once it becomes available. Lastly, they say it takes a village to raise a child. A recent survey of 2,000 working parents found that the average respondent relies on six people to help support their child's growth. For 46% of parents, the child's grandparents are involved. Extended family like aunts, uncles, and cousins also help contribute to the child's development. Only 8% of parents would include neighbors in their village. I'm Maria Moore, and that's a quick look at news. For more headlines and updates, visit rickysmileymorningshow.com. Rock T, what's going on in sports? What it is, Maria. I got a Cam Newton update for everybody regarding the brawl at the 707 Youth Football Tournament last weekend. None of the people who participated will uh, pursue any kind of criminal charges against one another, so they pretty much got together and uh, buried the hatchet. Said, all right, they can't because Cam hugged all of, them, all of them to sleep. He sure did, boy. <laughs> Joke it with he, grabbed, he gathered all of them and just and squoze them. One hand, squoze one arm at a time, and let's go. Bear hug them bad boy, dragging them, but no. Nah, so I'm glad they worked it all out. Uh, Caitlin Clark passes legend Lynette Woodard for most college points scored with 3,650 uh, in, a, in a basketball career, and she's still going, still going, man. Uh, but check this one out. An eight-year-old girl named Kinsley Murray is going viral for her rendition of the oh. national anthem. At the Indiana Pacers game, uh, go ahead and hit that thing, Super Dave. Stripes and bright stars, the red moon over rollers fight. Oh, the real bad we watch. <laughs> We're so gallantly streaming. Think that was, that was a half step down. Ooh. And the run gets yeah. man is air. She began pretty air. popular, man. It's air. It's air. That was good. That was good. Have? I mean, she's, she's gonna be a better singer. She just need voice training. Yeah, she's eight. And uh, yeah, she's eight years old. She just need voice training. Uh, she didn't hit the right note on that on the main note, and she held the wrong note a long time. Uh, any musician would tell you that, but I mean, she has potential. She just need voice training. Once she where where did she training, sing it at? Yeah, that was the Indiana, at, uh, Indiana uh, Pacers game. She's oh, been okay. singing these things since she was five. And, you know, I love, you know. Yeah, they need to get her voice training so she can hit the right notes. 
She's eight years old. You got to you got to hit the right notes. Still got to hit the right notes. She's not four or five. Eight years old is old enough to hit the right notes. I've seen you know too what many that sounds like, that, Ricky? It, it sounds like she may be the grandchild of one of the executives that oversees a game. Yeah. yeah and well, they said, "Put my baby out there and let her sing." I'm gonna go, Randy Jackson. That's a no for me, dog. <laughs> Put her, oh. yeah, I need to put her in voice training. Say what, Gary? No, Special K talking about that. No, but for me, really, I just wanted to sound like a little girl. Well, she did sound like a little girl. No, uh, no, but you can't did. have her be on the wrong note and have use vibrato on the wrong note. Pitchy. I love her. And the rock is red. This is that, that. That's the note. That's mm. the note. We love her courage, man. So Not, keep on singing, kids. Uh, we love her courage. That's the rock still a note is red. The wrong note. You got to hit the right note, Gary. I don't care. I know, honey. Hey, and we don't need no or no vibrato. It needs to be the right note. And this was Period. just judge. This is not judging her, y'all. So don't be sending in no letters. Y'all didn't just that little guy. Uh, well, I mean, it's yeah, just a matter of being ready for that kind of stage. All right, That's all it is. It's just being ready. To me, all you want to. It's a no for me, dog. <laughs> They could have went through a bad search. Drop it like it's hot. Tough crowd. Drop it like it's hot. So hot and hot. Me in this hot. Woo! You can catch me at the hot spot. It's the B-R-A-T. All right, Joe Rick Brown, morning show. Time for the hot spot. Brett, good morning. Good morning, Ricky. Good morning, everybody. I'm your girl, Brad Tad Tad, and this is the hot spot where we bring you music, movies, and more. So let's get off into it. Lifetime's controversial Where is Wendy Williams docuseries, which aired over February 24th and 25th, averaged 1.4 million same-day viewers. That's more than triple the average primetime audience for Lifetime. That's more than triple the average primetime audience for Lifetime in the previous three weeks, which hovered a little above 300,000 viewers. Where is Wendy also brought in more same-day viewers than Lifetime's January docuseries, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard, which averaged 887,000 viewers over its six hours. Moving on, y'all. Terry Crews revealed this week he didn't receive a dime for his role in Training Day, but emphasized that the lack of a check has never affected his love for a project. Crews said, I have never, ever looked at what whatever money I got as a horror story. You can't nod yes and me no. Cruz went on to say that he was only paid $4,000 for his role in 2002's Friday After Next and that he received nothing for 2001's Training Day. Wow. The two mm. films eventually put Cruz on the path to becoming the movie star he is today. He explained, I didn't get zero for Training Day, but it changed my life forever. You wouldn't know who I was if it weren't for a no-paying job. Cruz went on to compare his perspective to that of an athlete. Name somebody who played football for money when they started, he said. When they start, they get no money. They play football for free. They play basketball for free. Then you get all, all the way to the pros, and then you get the millions. Uh, there's no other way, he said. There's no way to hop, skip, and jump this thing. If I did it, I loved it. This keeps my heart always full of gratitude. All you right. got to be what built from the ground up. <clears throat> Building, yeah. Buildings are built from the ground up. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, y'all, moving on. Rapper Tory Lanez has filed an appeal after being found guilty of shooting Meg Thee Stallion. Lord, Lanez's legal team cited erroneous admission of evidence and prosecutorial misconduct as grounds for the appeal. Uh, the filing claimed that Megan allowed to inappropriately answer questions in a narrative format <laughs> during the December 2022 trial, including testimony concerning irrelevant and inadmissible matters, such as her feelings regarding the circumstances of the incident. Lane's attorney argued that sympathy for the victim is out of place during an objective determination of guilt. They claimed that during closing arguments, prosecutors made multiple improper appeals to emotion and sympathy for the victim. Wow. Which had no bearing on Lane's guilt or innocence. A jury found Lane's guilty in December of 2022 on three counts related to the July 2020 shooting, that's assault with a semi-automatic handgun, having a loaded and unregistered firearm in a vehicle, and gross negligence in discharging his firearm. He was sentenced to 10 years in prison in August 2023. All right, y'all, we're going to wrap up the hot spot on that note. But coming up next, well, not next, why don't y'all hit us up with them? I do that all the time. Why don't y'all hit us up with them?